time to get into a video that I've been getting a lot of requests about, and that's the tying of the Nightcrawler fly. I'm in my fly shop today and I'm gonna go through the material list with you and the tying steps to tie this intruder. It's black and blue with pink accents and it hunts for kings and steelheads. Something that you definitely wanna have in your fly box and something you're not gonna to wanna to share with your buddies. Let's get into it. This is the material list. Okay guys, we're gonna get into the tying of the Nightcrawler. The first thing that we're gonna need is a pink Pro Sport Fisher tube, and we're gonna cut about half of the junction tubing off. I like this for the length of this fly. So this is the normal size here, and this is what we're gonna use as uh, the part to tie our fly on. So we're gonna take black Vivas power thread, and we're gonna wrap right around this area here. That is the junction tube connection to where we're tying the fly on. Couple wraps, spin, spin, one, two, one, Two, right come up here and we're gonna set that down and then we're gonna take some loon thin fly finish we're gonna drop that right on here and lock our thread in right and you can be kind of generous in the beginning here right and then you're gonna take your light your UV pin light and you're gonna hit that cure it up you know rotate it a little bit make sure it's really getting in there all right so then we're going to grab our scissors, we're going to cut that one little piece of thread off that we've begun with here. All right, that's trash. Now we're going to make a dubbing loop, right? So I got a loon dubbing spinner here. And pull that down. And you want this about eh, four inches, four inch dubbing loop. It's nice, it's easy to work with. Start here and then one, two, you're going to cross twice, then come up again once, twice. One, two, come up, set that down, All right? So now what we wanna do is we're gonna take this dubbing here and we just wanna pull it apart. This is uh, Sinyo's Midnight Fusion dubbing, right? Just pull it apart, make sure it's stacked. And then what we wanna do is you're gonna kinda of cross it up just about like this, make it about that length, right? And then you're gonna open your dubbing loop and you're gonna stick it into the dubbing loop. Right, flatten that down, right? All right, now we're gonna grab right above the dubbing spinner, pinch with your thumb and first finger and spin and then pull back a little bit and it'll all twist up. We're gonna do this a couple of times. We want this, these, uh, these materials to be pretty tight. Yeah, pull on it good, I'm gonna do it again. Right, then grab your, uh, actually what I like, um, since it's always sitting next to me is my whip finisher, just to pull it out just a little bit. It's really, really sharp. Grab the whip finisher, pull out just a couple of pieces of material because we want that wire really thin. And then also, you know, I'd give it one more spin. I'm gonna be really aggressive with the brush. Right, now you're gonna wrap this around until you run out. Right, this is, uh, this is the beginning of our dubbing wall. This is the first stage in the Nightcrawler. Right, just keep wrapping, wrapping. And if you feel like you got a lot of material, it's better to wrap back toward the junction tubing rather than the head of the fly because you don't want to crowd it. Right, you notice I'm not pulling any of the material back at all. I want it to go forward. Now what we're going to do on the last wrap, we're going to pull the material forward and then we're going to bring that dubbing loop right over here, and now you've created that. And you're going to tighten up your thread a little bit. Here we go. And then you're going to wrap around and then cross the dubbing loop once. Go around here, then cross again, and around here. All right, I'll do it one more time. Tying this one for Chinook, so. Uh, there, toothy crater. All right, and we're going to pull that dubbing loop off, okay? So now what we got to do again is we're going to create one more dubbing loop, right, right on top of it. Okay, one, one more dubbing loop right in front, right, cross once, cross twice, go up, cross once, cross twice, tighten it up, set your thread down, right? So now that we've done that, we are taking this, uh, this brilliant blue, or I think it's Kingfisher blue, um, Arctic Fox, right? 
So what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that the back of this fly is not really bulky. So I'm going to pull the guard hairs out. So I take this comb and pinch the tips and then pull. And I'm going to get all this mess that I really don't need. It's just extra bulk in the fly. It's just kind of unnecessary, right? Once I've done that, so I've already created a dubbing loop. We're going to stick this in to the dubbing loop. And we're going to spin it up the same way uh, that we did that uh, Midnight Fusion dub. Right, flatten that out, spread spread it out in the beginning, it'll twist up a lot nicer. And go about three quarters out of one side and another quarter out of the other side. Um, I like the blue in the back of this to be kind of lengthy because it's a black and blue fly, remember, with pink accents. So I want this to be kind of long toward the, long toward the back, okay? I'm gonna spin that, twist, All right? If you do this correctly, you should be able to see the black thread through the blue arctic fox. Okay, it's looking good, it's looking good. Okay, grab your whip finisher here. Pull out anything that's kind of trapped up in there. And you're just gonna, again, you're gonna spin it. It gets really, really thin. It's looking good. Now I'm gonna grab my brush again. I'm gonna get, get aggressive. That's looking good. Okay, now we're gonna wrap this around. And when you're wrapping this, the, uh, the Arctic Fox, you can part this, pulling with your fingers backwards and rolling it as tight to that dubbing ball as you can. The tighter that you wrap it to the dubbing ball, the more that the fibers are gonna, gonna open up and splay out, which is what we want. We don't want uh, you know a whole bunch of fibers on one side of the fly. All right, it's looking good. And for intruders, sparser the better. They're just gonna, you're gonna cast better and um, they're just gonna fish better because the water's just gonna get through the fibers really, really good. Okay, that's looking good, guys. All right, now we're gonna grab our thread, tighten it up. All right, and then right there, really, really tight. Cross once, go up and around, cross again, up and around, up and around. Set down your thread, all right, and then we can cut off this little tag in piece back here in the back, we don't need that. that or, that's where our dubbing loop was created, right? Cut that off, all right? Set that bad boy down. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take ostrich. You can use Rhea as well. Um, I like ostrich, uh, it's a little bit easier to find and Rhea at some time, for, for beginner fly tires can be a little bit difficult to work with, they're very, very thin, but uh, I've actually started to really like uh, ostrich. So we have blue and pink ostrich, right? So what I do is we're gonna place this in four sections. We're gonna go on top, on the side, on the bottom, and then on the other side. And we're gonna do this with the blue ostrich and we're gonna do this with the pink ostrich. So depending on the length of your fly, you can either have it set back very far or you can set it up a little bit more um, and then you can tie around this part. You can cover this over onto the tube with the thread. So I don't need this to be um, really, really huge but I just want to make sure that I can lock these materials down without having any problems. We're going to set that down there. We're going to tighten up our thread. And we're going to, again, we're going to do uh, the blue in four sections. We're going to do the pink in four sections. All right, tighten that thread up. Here we go. Loose wrap to begin, then tighten up. And that's two wraps around. All right, and then we're gonna go back. Okay, all right, now we're going to take, and we're gonna take a, a, a feather from a, a Jumbo Guinea 
here, and we're going to peel the left side of it. So if the fly is facing uh, away from you as far as the bend of the, the quill, pull off the left side. Just gently and get 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 to the tip if you can. All right. So now what we're going to do also is we're going to grab some Miracle Flat Braid. Right. So this is a mini flat braid. This is like a, a white pearl. Um, the number is MF20 for those looking. So you can use the flat um, tinsel. Um, it just doesn't wrap around that ostrich just as nicely. And then if, but if you are going to choose to use that, uh, you'll need some wire to go above that as well. So uh, everything stays in place. All right, pull off a little section of this. We're gonna gonna cut that. Don't make yourself struggle. Okay, and now we're gonna put this mini. We're gonna put this mini flat braid in. You're gonna wrap that around here, right? Tighten up with a couple of wraps here, right? And then you are going to take. your jumbo guinea and you're gonna lay this on top of it as well. Right, and like, why are you laying both sections on? Cause you wanna wrap the flat braid all the way to the front and then come back and then you're gonna wrap the flat braid after this, but you're going to, uh, you're going to cut your thread off and you'll begin it, begin it again. So lay that pretty close and then a couple wraps right around here. All right, place that down. Make sure you're not trapping up anything else in there like I was just a second ago. All right, and then wrap tight. And right, pull all your materials back. All right, tight wraps, tight wraps. And then you can go ahead and wrap your thread for a little bit. So now what we got to do is you can grab your hackle pliers and grab that piece of guinea, right, right by the quill. And we're going to spin that around. Right, spin that around. Ended up pretty tight. And we're gonna, oh, excuse me. Guys, let's lay your flat braid forward. Right, here we go. Before you start spinning. Forgot to mention that. Okay. Pull all your fibers back. Okay. And honestly, if you want to, you can skip this step. It's not, it's not ne necessary. It's not going to make a fish any different. It's just something aesthetically pleasing. So you got your flat braid pulled forward. So now what we need to do is you need to bring our thread backwards, and you're going to wrap over right along the edge of where you had the guinea to lock that in place all the way back. I'm going to pull that down. It moved a little bit. It's OK. Right, I'm gonna put it right underneath here. As long as I get that quill right in the middle, we're all good. Yeah, got it. Okay, that's gonna stay still. Your flat braid is gonna wrap up on you a little bit, but it's okay. Couple good tight wraps. Again, unwrap that flat braid. Okay, now you can cut off the quill of the jumbo guinea there. Pretty tight. Okay, now that we've done that, so you can take your thread and wrap it forward. So you can cut the thread if you need to, uh, if you want to do it in two stations. I'm going to leave my thread going. I'm just let it go. We're going to bring it to the front. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that piece of, of mini flat braid and we're going to wrap backwards a little bit because the thread pushed it forward. So you're going to wrap backwards. We're going to make this look really, really clean. And you will have to wrap over itself, right? So right there to the edge, looking really, really clean. All right now we're going to wrap forward.
Okay, that's looking good. Now what you're gonna do is go around, around with the thread, wrap once, spin it around, twice there, and then you're gonna tighten it up, hold on your shank, pull it tight, wrap again, and then cross it, and cross underneath again. All right, there we go. That's it. All right, and we're gonna set our thread down, okay? And now, we're gonna cut off our piece of mini flat braid. Be careful, do not cut off your thread. All right, now we're gonna begin the second stage. Okay guys, now we're on to the second stage of the night crawler. So what we're gonna do is we need to start with a dubbing loop, just like we did at the first stage, right? It's better to make your dubbing loop bigger than smaller so you're not struggling with it, right? Make the dubbing loop cross once, cross twice, loop around once, cross once, cross twice, loop around, set your thread down. Got the thread kind of tight there. There you go. All right, so we got a dubbing. So the, the difference what we're gonna do here is when we start with this dubbing ball, we're gonna use the Midnight Fusion dub and we're gonna use black and blue Arctic Fox and we're gonna make one uh, dubbing loop, or, or excuse me, we're gonna use the, the dubbing loop we have to create our dubbing ball. We're gonna use all these materials together. So what you wanna do is thin out your dubbing. You don't need as much as you did in the beginning. Thin it out a little bit and you're gonna lay down in a bed. This is a, you know, a trick called a composite loop pretty much, right? Putting a whole bunch of stuff in here. But we're laying these all on top of each other. So as you can see I here, see how what I have here? I have black and blue Arctic Fox and we're gonna lay that down on top of, I'm gonna turn it around so you can see a little better. Right, we're gonna lay that on top of our dubbing. So you could have made a bed with the dubbing and then we're putting the Arctic Fox right over top of it, right? Now, the reason that I'm doing this is, is that you get to this place in the fly and you can crowd the head. If you crowd the head, it's like terrible feeling. You did all this work, it looked great, and then you can't get the cone on. So. Um, this also kind of saves me a step. You only need one dubbing loop rather than two. So we have all that done here. So we're going to come back up here and we're going to open up our dubbing loop. And we're going to grab everything that was stacked down below that's sitting on that bed of dubbing with the Arctic Fox and you're going to place it through. Just be careful. Make sure that everything's going through so you don't leave anything out. Okay. All right. And you only need about, you know, a third going through the front, and then, um, you know, two thirds going through the back, or you can go half and half, just depends on uh, what type of look you're going for, right? So you're gonna pinch your dubbing loop, and then you're gonna spin, right? And then everything's gonna twist up together, right? And this will get tangled up. It's just part of the process, it's all right, right? It's gonna get tangled up. Tighten that up really, really well, right? Grab your pick or your whip finisher, and then pull out all those wraps, all right? So nothing's trapped. We don't want anything trapped, right? You're gonna get some stuff that's gonna fall out. It's all good. Spin that up really, really, really well, all right? Pull that tight. We're gonna pick this out a little bit more. And then again, grab your brush, all right? Cause we don't want any excess in here. And then you're just gonna aggressively brush, all right? Now, we're gonna begin and we're gonna spin around, right? Pull the materials back a little bit. Remember, we do not wanna crowd the head, right? Pull back, right? We don't need to pull any of the fibers back yet because we're, we're trying to make a big prop. So just kind of fold it over each other. Okay, it will, it will look a little bit messy when you're, when you're going, but it'll clean up. Okay. Now you can start to move some of these materials back. All right, things will look right. If you still got a whole bunch of pink tube in the front, then you can make it, make it to the end. All right, we're gonna spin around. All right, we're looking good. Still got, a, still got a prop. Now we need to pull all these materials back, and then you'll take when you get to the thread, we'll have a clean space to wrap around. I wrap around twice with the dubbing loop. All right, then you're gonna tighten up your thread. And 
then we're gonna tie that dubbing loop off, right? Now we just saved two steps because we were gonna do two dubbing loops like we did in the beginning. We just didn't need to. This is a step saver, All right? Cross that and right? tie that off, then slide out. If you do it right, you should not have much more dubbing loop to cut off. And then uh, you can leave everything flattened out. I like to kind of see what the fly looks like as I'm kind of moving along. So I'm gonna take my whip finisher and just pick out a couple of the materials so it's splayed out just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Untrapping some fibers here. Like I said, you can either use this or you can use your pick. It's looking good. Looking good. And you can really get aggressive after the end, but we just wanna see, you wanna see that little shoulder. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to grab a black spay marabou feather. I like the long fibers on these things, right? Now, this is this is your choice. You can either use the you can use the whole feather if you'd like, um, if you want to be a little bit more uh, heavy on the movement with the marabou, or you can strip down one side of it. Um, I like I said, I'm tying this one specifically for Chinook, so I want a bigger profile. So I'm actually not going to strip the left side like I did with that guinea. I'm going to leave this side on. I want this whole marabou feather in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tip of the feather, right? Find the quill right in the middle. You know, don't get too aggressive here. And I'm going to part all these materials and pull them down just so I got a little bit in the front so I have something to lock down. So it'll kind of look like this. That's what we're going to, we're going to tie our thread. We're going to lock it in right there, right? So we're going to sit that on the head right here, lay that down. And then we are going to bring our thread around, loose wrap in the beginning once. Now it's tied and twice. Now you're going to take this piece that's going forward you're gonna pull it back. And then we're gonna lock that down once and twice, you know, and this is power thread. You can really, you can really get after it so you can pull. Now we're gonna grab our hackle pliers and we're gonna grab our marabou feather with the hackle plier. We're gonna put this on the end. You can do this with your hands. Uh, I, I love this tool. The hackle pliers make life easier. Now, when you're beginning this, this is, this is a tip do not begin really aggressively pulling on it because the feather will break. So if you can just kind of start loosely, like you've already put it in there pretty tight with the power thread, so there's no reason for you to really yank on this thing at the moment, right? And then you're just gonna start grabbing and palmering around and then pulling the materials back. We do wanna pull this marabou feather back. We don't want any of these fibers pushing forward. And we're just gonna keep going around until you feel satisfied. So that's up to you. Um, you know, you wanna have a little bit of color you know, in there, like I said, I want the head of this thing to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty easy to see as I'm, uh, you know, places I'm gonna go and be fishing in some glacial water, and I want this thing to really stand out and, uh, you know, angry one of those big Chinook to taking it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just pulling it back. So now, once you get down to the, the middle of the quill of this marabou feather, now you can start pulling on a little bit more because the, the fibers are a lot stronger, right? But I'm really getting a good profile around here. It's looking good, it's looking good, right? And I do not feel at this moment that I am crowding the head. So I'm just gonna keep on going, it's fine. This thing, and this thing casts like a dream, so even though it looks like there's a lot of marabou in it, it's still gonna sail. Okay, so that's good for me. Now, this is my cutting off the marabou trick. So like we're gonna take off the, take off the hackle pliers, right? We're gonna grab our scissors, and we're gonna cut this thing right close to my finger before we tie it down, right? And you're like, well, heck, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna tie it down? Pull out your other extra fibers that you don't need. You're gonna place one finger here. You're gonna tighten your thread up. Now you can see the quill of that marabou feather. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap really closely right over that quill. As soon as you grab that, then the marabou feather's locked in. And then you can see the quill and you're gonna back the thread up just a little bit and keep going around that. And what it's going to do is it's going to create like a little, a little notch, right? That little notch is what you're going to drop all of your other materials in. So we got ostrich that's going to go in there. We have flash. We got some saddle hackle, um, your Amherst, and we got some jungle cockeyes also. Like it, uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So this is uh, something that I've been doing for a long time. And uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're going to grab our brush here. We're going to part this material back just a little bit, kind of. See what's going on here with our profile. It's looking clean, looking clean. Okay, tighten it up just a little bit more. Now you might have a little piece of the quill that might need to be trimmed. 
right? Which is fine. You can leave it in there. It doesn't matter. Just don't cut your thread, right? Okay, now, now that we've done that, now it's time to add some more, uh, some more legs to it. So I have some pretty long pieces of uh, black ostrich. Like I like the long pieces because what I'm trying to do with this night crawler is, so the head is black, obviously, and then the back is the multicolored with the blue and the pink. I want the black ostrich to hang over those black, uh, excuse me, the blue and pink ostrich, right? And you can shorten it up a little bit, you know, depending on what you want. If you want most of the black just only in the head, then kind of shorten up your thread. So like I said, I have a notch. This makes life really, really easy. And then we're gonna go with a loose wrap. We're gonna lock that down. All right, two wraps there. Again, we're doing it, you know, four stages. So I just did it uh, kind of on the left. And we're gonna turn this thing. Now we're gonna do it on the top. I'm gonna finish it off with two more wraps. And now I need to come back and I need to cut off all these extra pieces right toward the tip, all right? Just snip all that stuff down, kind of get it out of the way. And like again, like pull your thread back. Do not cut your thread. That's bad news. Done all this work, you don't wanna cut your thread. All right, looking good, looking good. Okay. We'll spin that around here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack some flash. So um, flash, if you're cutting it right off of the card, you know, it can be pretty long, but we're gonna do this um, in two sections. So you need eight strands of pearl flashaboo, right? Even up all the strands here. So doing this. Now I believe for this night crawler, the full length of this from here, it's too long. So I do about three quarter length. Three quarter length is decent, right? So we're gonna cut that. You know, and then we're gonna come up here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack the flash about halfway on. So yay long. And we're gonna go right pretty much like pretty much right in the middle. Right, you're gonna lay that down and then start. I'll pull it a little bit more. You're going to start with a loose wrap right in that notch again. Everything's going to sit in that notch, right? Tighten that up once, tighten that up twice. Okay, now we're going to rotate your vise just a little bit here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is, is like, we want to place the flash down in like a V pattern because we don't want everything laying right on top of each other. So we're going to grab these four strands here. And we're going to pull everything, not straight back, but you're going to lay it in a V pattern. So you'll have a V on this side and you'll have a V on this side, which is going to create a cylindrical uh, flash all the way around it, right? And again, you're going to start with a loose, loose wrap, tighten that up, and then tighten that up, right? And everything's still in that notch. And you can pull these uh, flash pieces apart and it'll evenly stack. And if something feels too long at the end, um, like, which it shouldn't, you know, you can go ahead and trim your flash. Just do not cut the ends uh, even. You want them to be uneven because you want different flash points. It just looks more alive, right? So we're going to cut this again, a three-quarter length. Okay, stack this in the notch. Okay. It's looking good, All right? And around once. And around twice and we're gonna turn the vise a little bit we're gonna fold and around once and around twice okay looking decent okay so now we got some finishing things and this is a uh, it can get a little tricky if you're not used to working with uh, small materials but we got a uh, Got a couple more things. We got some Lady Amherst, some pink Lady Amherst to put on there, and we have some saddle hackle. So again, we're gonna do uh, uh, four sections, just two strands of each. We want some pink toward the head.
way. Alright, I'll take your scissors. Trim your amherst just a little bit. And anything else, because all these little materials at the end, like they will um, they will get in your way when you're trying to put your cone on. Just again, be careful, do not cut your thread. Okay, looking good. Okay. Got some saddle hackle, right? So I chose natural. Um, pretty thin. You can go thicker. I just I like the thin stuff. Um, it doesn't really take over the fly. It just adds a little accent to it. And then we're gonna stack those on. And again, you can choose your like. I like the I like my saddle hackle a little bit longer than the other materials because I want like two tails on it, right? And do your best to stack it flat. Lock that in. So that's one wrap. That's two. All right, looking good here. And then we're just gonna stack another one on the exact opposite side. Okay. Let's try to try to lay it flat as best as you can. Okay, and once, twice. Okay. Now again, we're gonna we're gonna trim anything else that's up too far forward. We'll let the saddle hackle tips. I don't need those. Okay. And then uh, I'm using Pro Sport Fisher. I believe this is a medium jungle cock here. Um, you can use the real stuff. I think the fake stuff actually stands out better. Um, that's what I usually use on, like, I'd say 90% of my flies, unless I'm taking, um, you know, a specific picture or something like that. I'll use the real deal, but um, the fake stuff works really, really well, and I, I like it. All right. All right, and then we're going to real tight wrap. Real tight wrap. Then we're gonna turn it to the exact opposite side. Actually, I'm gonna have to wrap one more time. So we're turning it here. Let's see where our cone is. so that that uh, paper isn't crowding the head, all right? And a bunch of tight, really tight wraps. This is the good stuff about Viva's Power Thread. It's really tough. Um, you, you're gonna have to work to uh, uh, to break it. So you can use your whip finisher. Um, the only thing about you know tying on a tube is, is that um, the whip finisher tends to slide off because um, you can't really lay the, uh, um, the thread on it that well. I'm gonna give it a shot here, but if it doesn't work, just go ahead and just tie it off with your fingers and it'll work out just fine. Alright. There we go. Oh no, we're we're looking good here. Pull out a little bit. Alright. Tighten that down. We're gonna do one more. Alright. Right, pull that back enough. Uh oh. This is where it can be a problem. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tie it off, tie that other one off with our finger. Just the overhand lock, loop, and tighten that down. We'll do two of these. Okay. Pull that thread back. Okay, guys. All right. Now, what I what I do is. Um, you can use the uh, the Loon Clear Fly Finish. Um, I've actually liked um, using the hard head cement. Uh, I feel it really, really stands up well. But like I said, I'm I'm throwing T17 for Chinook for this thing. I'm gonna hit the bottom. It's just it's part of the process. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on all of the fibers. Right. I don't need to get crazy, but I do wanna I wanna get it on there. Right. And you can finish it off with the tube toothpick or something like that if you need to but you get that really in there yep I'm gonna finish off with the toothpick 
then just kind of work that right into the tip there. Yeah, all in all that material. It's just gonna lock everything into this stuff is really, really tough. All right now that you've done that, you can cut your thread off. And just keep working that around. It'll take a couple of minutes, you know, for everything to set up, so you do have time to work with it, um, which is great. Yeah, just working that around a little bit. Okay. And this is the finish. All right. So what we got to do now is we have a, a Pro Sport Fisher vented cone, right? It's, a, it's called a Sonic Disc. Um, I like pink pink accent right on the front. You can use chartreuse or something else if you want to spice it up with a little different color. And then you're going to place that on to the tip of the fly, right? Um, I actually found that this uh, hair stacker, this loon hair stacker, works really, really well. Put that over there. It goes right over the cone. And then you can push it and you just hold it. You're going to hold it because what we're looking for is we want that cement to kind of set up as best as we can. Um, if you're worried about ruining your hair stacker with the the hard head cement then go ahead and use something else but you can just push it back a little bit use that you can use the back of another tube that you haven't uh, actually like like you haven't cut it off yet slide that on there right and it's gonna push it down and it'll hold it now remember this is your next tube we're gonna cut it off anyway so it really doesn't matter but it goes it slides right over and it's gonna work out great now you can just sit there and hang out for a moment and let that cure up and then we're gonna cut the tip um, after we remove that and we are going to burn the end with a lighter is you're just going to grab this down here and you're going to cut the junction tubing and the tip really really close all right good strong scissors all right what we're going to do is we're going to burn the tip got a good lighter As soon as that heats up, right, we need to stick it back on the vise. You want to do it pretty quickly and create that hole to go all the way through the tube. Push that. It'll get on there, and it'll make a big ring around. Push it on there pretty good. Right, and then just sit there and just wait a second, and then let it, uh, let it harden up. All right, it doesn't take very long. The plastic actually melts pretty fast. Right, and then we're going to grab from the cone here, we're going to pull back off of the vise. Let's put it back on the vise, guys, so we can see it one last time. Right, and you can pick out your materials or whatever, so you can see what she looks like. Right, see all the work that you put in. Guys, please, please send me pictures of any fish caught on this fly. Uh, I worked a long time just trying to develop this thing and figure it out and test it and uh, like it's one of the flies that I mean I absolutely believe in. Um, if you're looking for any of the materials uh, to finish this fly, you are, excuse me, if you're looking for any of the materials to tie this fly, uh, they can be found on my website um, at flyguide.com. Um, there's a link that's right down here, flyguide.com. And you can also, you can also find the materials uh, on shop dot flyguide.com so again guys please give me a ring uh send me a direct message on instagram at flyguide and let me know your success on the night crawler thanks for watching guys bye